Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Thoughts from a Car. Uh, this is a show that I decided to start, it's a vlog, where I drive to work, it takes me about eight minutes to get to work, and I have all these opinions. I work out in the morning, I get really, I get a lot of energy when I, after breakfast, so I wanna kind of expend it. I always have good opinions and good thoughts when I'm in a car on my way to work, but I never really get to share them with anybody because I forget them by the afternoon because I'm so tired because I get up so early to work out. So I decided to make this vlog. Uh, it's a daily vlog, five days a week, where I take eight minutes out of my day to share my thoughts uh, and my opinions on everything from sports to current news, uh, to old news, to music, to sports, all this kind of stuff. So uh, let's get started on the show. Today, I wanted to talk about last night's game in the NHL. First night of the NHL, puck dropped at about 7 o'clock or 7.15. It was the Montreal Canadiens at the Toronto Maple Leafs. And I'm not necessarily, I don't really have a team. I don't have a, tr I'm not, I'm not partial to the Toronto Maple Leafs. I'm not partial to the Montreal Canadiens. I like the rivalry. I think the Canadiens are a better team and they won 4-3. But it actually ended up being an exciting game. But yesterday I promised myself that I would actually watch more hockey this year because I didn't really get to watch a lot of it. Last year because I'm such a dedicated NFL fan, I spend most of my Sundays watching games. And being a family guy, I tend not to uh, watch a lot of TV because I want to spend time with the family and not my girls. Uh, don't like to watch TV, uh, watch sports a lot, which is okay. They watch it sometimes, but they have a short attention span for anything. Um, anyway, I should probably, well, that, that was it, really, uh, what I had to say about the game. It was a really cool game. I didn't get to watch it, unfortunately. I had some errands to run, uh, but I will watch the next game. I want to tell you a little bit about myself because not nobody knows who I am. Um, I'm a, a husband, a father. I'm 36 years old. I have two young girls. Uh, right now, they are at this at this point in time. They are five and six. My eldest, Taya, is turning seven in November, and uh, yeah, my my youngest is Jade. Jade's in junior kindergarten or senior kindergarten. Sorry, things are going so fast. And Taya is in uh, grade two, which I can't believe grade two goes so fast. If you're a father and you watch your kids grow up, it feels like I've been a father forever even though it's really been only seven years. I can't remember a time without kids, but when you look at how they grow and how they develop, it's one of those things where you're just like, I can't believe, it's like they're already seven and they're already five. You know, and next year Jay's gonna be in grade one. I mean, it's, it's amazing. And I remember both of their fifth birthdays were the times that I actually just like, holy cow, like this is ridiculous. I'm, you know, I got a little, a little emotional as a dad saying they're growing up so fast, they're not babies anymore, they're kids. And we have to treat them as kids and give them more responsibility and expect more from them and stop treating them like a baby, especially my youngest Jade, because we tend to baby her because she's the youngest, she is the baby of the family. So anyway, that's me in a nutshell for family life. I am a marine and freshwater ecologist. I work for the federal government of Canada. I live in Canada, I should probably say that. I live in Canada. I live right by Toronto in a little town, a little city called Burlington, Ontario, just off of Lake Ontario. A uh, great little city. I grew up in Toronto, so I'm always partial to Toronto. I love going to there. But it's really expensive to live, and I don't want to pay that, that price. And I like the small city where I don't have to deal with rush hour. I don't have to deal with anything like that. So, uh, and, and just kind of like hustle and bustle of a city life. But I can live just outside the city, and when I want to go in to get that hustle and bustle, I can go in and, and get whatever I want, or enjoy the, the nightlife, or enjoy a nice dinner at a, at a unique restaurant uh, in downtown Toronto. The next subject I want to talk about, I'm halfway to work, by the way, uh, the next subject I want to talk about is music. I actually heard a song, I was flipping around on the radio this morning after my workout, and I heard a song, and it was by Collective Soul. I'm a, I grew up in the 90s, like musically, like my teenage life was in the, was in the 90s. Uh, that's how old I am. But, where is it here? Ah, Shine by Collective Soul, that's it. So Shine by Collective Soul, I haven't heard that since like 
the mid 90s early to mid 90s which is it's a great song i just forgot about it and there's a lot of songs that i actually forget about you know i love all the different types of music i'm more partial to hip-hop rap r&b reggae kind of music but i also love alternative and rock and hard rock uh, because that's i grew up on that stuff uh, as well as hip-hop but i grew up on all that stuff so i like to listen to all of it in my older age 36 uh, so i like to listen to that kind of stuff so what i really every once in a while i'm going to share a song that i haven't heard in a while and i'd like you to in the comments below, I want to I want you to tell me a song that you love so much from the 90s. Okay, all the older guys and girls out there uh, who remember the 90s, what was your favorite song? Not necessarily a poppy song, but something that you really enjoyed that you remember but you, you haven't listened to in a long time. Um, so I always like to hear that kind of stuff because I'm always looking for new types of music to listen to. Because to be honest, I'm not liking new music anymore. The hip hop that comes out now really sucks in my opinion. Uh, but you know, you have to deal with it. Some of them are good, but most of the stuff that I find is garbage. There's no substance, substance to it. Uh, and I like to, I guess maybe as I'm older, I like to hear a little more substance. Um, you know, things like Gangstar and, and Most Def, Talib Kweli, Pharaoh Munch. I like those guys. I don't get to listen to a lot of it other than their old stuff. I don't really know about their new stuff. So if, if you know some new songs from them that you really like, just share them in the comments below. I'd love to hear them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about a show that I really have gotten into in the past year or so uh, through Netflix uh, is Sons of Anarchy. I'm not sure if you guys are a fan of Sons of Anarchy, Anarchy but it's one of the best shows that I've ever seen. It's pretty gritty, uh, pretty bloody, and at times a little gruesome, uh, but it really, I don't know, I don't know if it's real or not, or if it, if it, if it you know, shows any kind of reality to being in a biker gang, but it's kind of funny, you know, you get the serious part where they're actually trying to make money and just sometimes trying to go legit, but they keep getting pulled back, but a lot of it's like, I find juvenile, you know, like a lot of the stuff that they do is juvenile. And for instance, a spoiler alert, in their last season, Jax Teller, the sort of the leader of the gang, of this biker gang, his wife gets killed in, in the season finale of, of season six. And now in season seven, he's on a rampage. And his mother is the one who killed his wife, uh, but she told him that it was the Chinese gang that went and killed the wife. So now, this guy is taking a whole gang, and like he's got other charters and stuff like that, and they're actually going around killing all these Chinese guys be uh, from these gangs because they think that you know they put a hit on his wife so he's angry even though it's not true because the mother lied she's caused all this death and it's just bloodshed 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 everybody dying and it's, it's kind of interesting um because you know a lot of people died there were huge massacres in the show there were um they went into one of the brothels that that the that the charter had or that the motorcycle gang had and they just killed everybody. I think it was like 16 people, like innocent people. Um, nothing, nobody from the gang, but just to send, the Chinese guys just wanted to send a message because somebody, you know, the the motorcycle gang uh, stole their heroin and guns. And, and it was just going back and forth. But it's so funny because it's all about a misunderstanding. Anyway, I love the show. I suggest you get into it uh, if you haven't gotten into it. And I apologize if I spoiled anything, but I did say spoiler alert. Uh, but it's one of the shows that I really love just because of its greediness. It's in its last season, so I'm looking forward to seeing how they tie it all up. I find the writing really good uh, in it. If you want to see it, you can just go. I've got a link to Netflix. You can just click on the, the link below for Netflix, and it'll send you right out there. So anyway, I'm at work right now. It's about nine minutes. i got to get to work. got to get working on some stuff and, and make my cash during the day um, and get some stuff done. So thanks for listening. It's the first episode. I'll see you guys tomorrow. See you later.